title, <coughs> Plurality of Existence. Principle. The things that God speaks into existence are plural. Turn to Psalms 33, verse 6. Psalms 33, verse 6. By the word of the Lord, for the heavens made, and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. So we find that the heavens are always identified in the plural. God spoke, and everything came into existence instantaneously. Turn to Hebrews, <clears throat> the first chapter, verses 1 to 2. <clears throat> God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past by the fathers, unto the fathers, by the prophets, hath in his last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. The word worlds there is actually ages, and in its plural. So what we find, eternity was spoken into existence. Hebrews 11, 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds, the ages, were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. The word frame there in the Greek is literally rendered perfectly joined together by the word of God. God. So the ages were spoken into existence in a state of plurality. They fit perfectly together and they flow in a harmony, which we have yet to experience. So we find that God creates in the plural, outside of time, outside of consciousness, and what he creates is what he speaks is meant to be eternal. Ephesians, the second chapter, verse 7. That in the ages to come, again in a plural state, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. We are created or recreated to experience life in plurality, never ending. Now we find the scripture lets us understand it teaches us that God himself is a plurality. John, the first chapter, verse 4. That is uh, first John, the epistle, not the gospel.
verses 4 and 5, 1 John. These things write we unto you, that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him, and declare unto you that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. So we find God is a multitude, a plurality of things. First John, fourth chapter, verse 16. We have known and believed the love of God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. So here again we see another aspect of the plurality of God. He's light. He's love. Light and love are realities. <coughs> Turn to Revelation, the first chapter, verse 4. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, which is, which was, and is to come referring to a pluralistic state of existence transcending time transcending law transcending limitation cannot be defined so we see God the plurality of God takes on many dimensions. And when God speaks, He creates in a plurality of existence. And we find <clears throat> comparison between the heavens and the earth, or the physical creation. Scripture teaches the physical creation was designed to exhibit linear existence, a different type of existence. Linear existence is a single state of limitation. Job, 38th chapter, verses 4 to 5. <clears throat> Thirty-eight. We find <clears> that <throat> God again creates, but He creates in a different perspective. Where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare if thou hast understanding. Who hath laid the cornerstone thereof? If thou knowest, or who hath stretched the line upon it? So we find the earth, <clears throat> the physical universe, is a construction with structure, dimensions structure, dimensions that connote limitation. Hence, they're constructed, not spoken into existence, so that they can ultimately go out of existence. They were not created to be permanent. Scripture teaches linear existence is characterized by restriction, limitation. Deuteronomy, 32nd chapter, verse 8.
when the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. So we find the human physical state of existence will always be characterized by boundaries, limitations. We find restriction, limitation, linear existence goes also into the spiritual realm. Scripture teaches the spiritual in the spiritual realm punishment is administered by restrictions. Turn to Jude, verse 6. angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day restriction limitation is a form of punishment Luke the 16th chapter verse 22 to 24 It came to pass, the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame restriction, limitation, characteristic of the physical universe. Revelation 20 verses 1 to 3. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. He cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years should be fulfilled. After that he must be loosed a little season. So we find the degree of punishment that is brought to bear contingent upon the infraction, the, 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 the transgression, is measured in degrees of limitation. The larger the crime, the more restriction. And for the heavy hitters like Lucifer and uh, his um, coterie of um, assistance, total, unlimited restriction. Same is true for humans. Those who have yielded themselves as vessels to Lucifer in eternity are going to exist in severe states of limitation, restriction. Daniel, 10th chapter, verses 12 to 14.
Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand, to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me and remain there with the kings of Persia. So we find here, the scripture strongly infers that dependent upon the degree of advancement, that is the degree of freedom that the entity, the intelligence has. Michael is a superior being to this messenger who is himself an advanced being because Michael was able to free him from his restriction captivity to the Luciferians. So we find a principle here that the greater the power, the greater the freedom, lack of restriction, limitation in the spiritual realm. The higher the advanced being, the greater the liberty that being has. Scripture teaches the human race is kept in affliction through limitation and restriction, both in its physical and spiritual being. In other words, the human race is kept limited through physical and spiritual bondage, restriction, limitation. Man was created for great things. But he never, never, never approaches anywhere near his capability. <clears throat> Turn to Luke, 13th chapter, verse 10 to 16. teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity eighteen years, and was bowed together, and could no wise lift up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him, and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. And he laid his hands on her, and immediately she was made straight and glorified God. The rule of the synagogue answered with indignation because that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath day and said unto the people, There are six days in which men are to work, and them therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord then answered him and said, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall and lead him away to watering? And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, Though these 18 years be loosed from the bond on this bond on the Sabbath day. The human race is kept in bondage in every area of its being. It's physical, it's mental, it's spiritual. Kept in bondage by the Luciferians. Restriction, limitation. Second Corinthians, fourth chapter, verses three to four. <clears throat> but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds, restricted, limited, put in a degree of incapacity, blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The light is the agency of liberation. 
The agency of restriction is darkness. Satan can blind the eye, he can blind the mind, he can restrict the spirit, he can inflict the physical in any number of ways. Now, what we find Turn to Revelation, the second chapter, verse 10. <coughs> Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. So what he does is to affect the minds of of people on the physical realm to physically imprison, physically restrict others. He has a number of ways in which he brings about limitation in the physical realm. You may be tried, and you shall be in tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. This is exactly what happened to Paul. Satan incited uh, those in the Roman uh, government to restrict Paul physically. But God instructed Paul in overcoming this physical limitation. Paul never, never intimates at all sitting in jail cell writing these epistles of any form of limitation whatsoever, which brings us to the next principle. Turn to Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 1. Paul illustrates the principle that the Word conveys to us. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty, freedom, wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. In other words, because of who we are, turn to 2 Corinthians, 5th chapter, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The Word of God, which is plural in its nature, connotes to us, conveys to us, a truth. And the truth is that because we have been regenerate, born again, supernaturally recreated to function where our Creator functions, that in essence we are not bound by the restrictions of the secondary creation in any way. So we have the option of depending upon our senses to convey reality of where we are or the Word of God to convey reality. The senses will always, always convey limitation because the senses are created to function in the linear environment. That's all they do. That's all they are capable of. And those that go by the senses are going to forever be under the limitations of the senses. Those that go by the Spirit are going to gradually or quickly ascend a level of maturity on a higher and higher and higher plateau of freedom, liberty. As we explained before, in the spiritual realm, it has been created to convey 
to connote plurality. Multi-leveled states of existence. We have been recreated to exist not in this limited physical environment. We have been recreated to exist in plurality, liberty, freedom. To the degree to which we exercise the talents and the abilities from a spiritual perspective, that is the degree to which we will live in liberty in this environment, let alone when we step past this environment into eternity and the, the glories that await us. But of course, the note of caution, the degree to which we grow in this life is going to be the degree, the level at which we exist when we step into eternity. <clears throat> if we allow ourselves to grow to the fullness of the stature of what we were created to be, then we will exist in levels, regions of liberty, plurality that are transcendental. We will be like those beings that are created with power that can exercise tremendous states of liberty, freedom, those that live restricted, closed lives here will in eternity live a reflection there of the life they have lived here. This is the beauty of our new covenant relationship. We can take it as far as we want or make it as limited as we want. The Father gives us the ability to do all things commensurate with what we decide to do. All things have been delivered into our hand and we determine our place in eternity. Title, Satan's Master Plan. Principle, Satan has kept the human race in bondage through the dependence upon his Luciferian system. Luke, the fourth chapter, verse five to six. <clears throat> Luke, the fourth chapter, verses five to six. The devil taking him up into an high mountain showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. The devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for it is delivered unto me, and to whomsoever I will I give it. And when it talks about all the kings of the world, the word world there is literally globe, planet. So he's talking about Satan being in control of all the world's systems governments which he engineered he designed them and basically this is the mainstay in which which keeps the human race in bondage which brings us to the next principle scripture teaches lucifer is in the process of bringing his system to destruction so that he can reestablish his former cosmic empire. Isaiah 14, verses 16 to 17. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying, is this the man that made the earth to tremble, <coughs> that did shake kingdoms? So it's talking about a procedure. The earth, the word tremble there is in an indolate. It's talking about upsets, tumults, things going into upheavals. Then kingdoms shaking their foundation then the world being made a wilderness tohu vaboru desolation 
that destroyed the cities thereof as a result of this. And that opened not the house of his prisoners. So he is in the process, it's a staged progression of inciting destruction of the system that he designed and erected because he knows he's going to be able to get back what he's been longing for. <clears throat> Principal Lucifer is allowed by God to again go forth and destroy all things. Isaiah 10 verses 5 to 7. O oh, Assyrian, the rod of mine anger, so the word rod there is instrument, and the staff in their hand, the Luciferians, is mine indignation. I will send him against an hypocritical nation, group, and against the people of my wrath. Will I give him a charge to take the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire of the streets. So he's getting a mandate. He doesn't know it. Uh, all he knows is it's getting easier and easier for him to do what he wants to do. But it's a mandate because the world's under judgment. And as he gets greater and greater leeway, the system's going to be going into greater and greater upheaval. Verse 7. How be it, he meaneth not so, neither doth his heart think so, but it is in his heart to destroy and to cut off nations, not a few. He doesn't want to limit his ability. He wants to destroy everything to fulfill his prime motive. the mandate he gets is is it to destroy everything or just selection it's a selection uh, a hypocritical nation and the people of God's wrath those that are the instruments of the abominations that are taking the human race down um, Isaiah 14, 13 to 14. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven after he destroys the earth system and sets up his own. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. So his focus, his goal, everything that's in him is to get back into the heavens to reestablish his hegemony over the creation. So we find, <clears throat> with this in mind, Isaiah 10, 5, 7 tells us, it's in his heart to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. He was going to destroy wholesale. Turn to Matthew 24, verses 9 to 10. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one 
another. So what he does is to carry out this destruction, everything that he possibly can get a hold, particularly God's people. <clears throat> it's going to be a time, ultimately, it's going to gravitate, not all at once, but it's going to increase in intensity. Uh, we're going to see upheavals, we're going to see tremendous destruction in all areas, culminating with total destruction in the people that are unprepared, saved and unsaved, are going to be caught up, overwhelmed by all this. Scripture teaches Satan will stamp this present system flat. Daniel, the second chapter, verse 40. kingdom shall be strong as iron for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things and as iron and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise so the emphasis is on this destruction this bruising this fragmentation utter um, obliteration of all that he can get his hands on Principle, after the destruction of the present system, the fourth empire will manifest into the Adamic reality with the first of the Luciferian kings. Revelation 13, verse 1. stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns ten crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy so after the destruction of the current order luciferian fourth empire will begin to rise in the first of the luciferian kings dominating the residual of the Adamic order. Man will be crippled and unable to uh, do anything about it because he will have spent all his energy fighting himself. Principle Scripture teaches the bride will be protected from the satanic influence until the rapture. While carnal Christians and Carnal Christians are slain, along with unsaved people. Revelation 12, verses 4 to 5. They sailed to the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. The dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered, for to devour her child as soon as it was born. So we find that the dragon cannot destroy the unborn child. Nor can he destroy the woman. He has to wait. He's prevented from it. The bride's going to be protected. Verse 5, she brought forth a man-child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. The child was caught up to God and to his throne. Why? Because the bride has a first relationship with the father. Therefore, he has the father's protection. But all other Christians and unsaved people are going to be wide open. Mark, 13th chapter, verses 8 to 9.
For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There shall be earthquakes in diverse places, there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. Beginning of sorrows, I believe, that's starting this year. But take heed to yourselves, in other words, he's warning Christians. For they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, ye shall be brought before rulers and kings, the Luciferians, for my sake, for testimony against them. He's talking here about just prior to the rapture and after the rapture. The, the thorough upheavals that are going to be taking place, the unbelievable uh, pressures that are going to be brought to bear against the human race. One reason I believe that the bride is going to be protected is because the Father is going to allow the bride to complete the necessary training to qualify to reach that point of qualification that makes her the bride. So he isn't going to allow Satan to take her out. <coughs> uh, plus the first love relationship that she has with him. He's going to allow her to complete the course, and then he's going to take her unto himself. And everybody else is going to have to go through the hell that's spewed here on earth in so many different ways. The first Luciferian king, I believe, is going to ultimately be considered a benefactor. Uh, he's going to be loved and worshipped and uh, can be considered a restorer of what people think is going to be uh, a revival of um, the current order, much like the Roman Empire. When the Roman Empire fell, you had kings that would arise and try to put it back together again. Uh, that's where the name uh, Caesar came from, um, and the corrupted aspect of Caesar, Tsar, the Russians. Kaiser, the Germans, these kings uh, uh, anointed themselves as a continuation of the restoral of the Roman Empire. Of course, they couldn't put it back together again. Same thing's going to happen here. Luciferian kings, the first one anyway, is going to engage in a beneficial, ultimate beneficial time for the human race. And their thinking is that they're entering into a, a new age, a brave new world, and all of a sudden destruction is going to come upon them because another Luciferian king is going to take the first one out, depose him, and take over. And you're going to get strife and antagonism. There's going to be six Luciferian kings before Satan is satisfied with the one that he wants to leave in charge, which of course will be the Antichrist. It's going to be a tumultuous period of time on the earth. Many changes because the scripture says that the Luciferian empire will be altered, be unlike any empire, any kingdom that ever went before it. <clears throat> and the human race is going to sink more and more into the um, influence of uh, the Luciferians. Uh, they're going to totally lose insight is to um, being distinct from whatever the influence is that they happen to encounter or whatever overcomes them, that's what they're going to flow with. <clears throat> the hardest group, of course, will be the Christians, the ones that will be the, the chattel of all things, no matter whether Luciferian or human, the Christians are going to be the off-scouring of all things. So we're entering to a period now of dramatic, dynamic change. Lucifer is engineering the destruction of all things by incitation. Nation against nation. Ethnic strife, cultural strife. People rising in all sorts of um, manifestations of uh, violence and antagonism. And this, like a flood tide, sweeping across the earth leading to global wars. I believe there'll be a series of them and an ultimate collapse. 
then the Luciferian Empire will show itself for what it is.